talked about how horrific it was and like how fast it all happened and he was angry at that it was targeted at the LGBTQ community. Um, there weren't specifics on how I felt. I probably gave them. I'm an oversharer. <laughs> um, but he didn't, he didn't push for anything. It didn't seem like he was super fascinated in that. I guess Were there any red flags in your mind? In my mind, what most people saw as red flags were yellow flags up until the stalking incident. That was the red flag and that's when I got out. Because I'm not I'm not sticking around for that. I guess the, the FBI is the FBI is uh, involved with this and they're saying that he had an interest in a violent ideology. Do you know what they're talking about? I mean, he talked to me about how people needed to take more action and maybe start a little ruckus. He never mentioned anything to the scale or wanting to like do anything extreme, just that like quiet protests weren't enough. There needs to be more direct action. And at that core, I believe, to his extreme, not at all. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, his band? You know, there's a lot of articles coming out about this band and the things they sung about. Um, yeah. Was um, that a red flag? So, I never heard them. He told me they were bad and I believed him. Um, but he did say that that genre, um, they can get a bad rap because if you just jump into it, it's scary. But it's mostly about how he described it to me was it's about the shock factor. It's about taking these horrific things that no one there would think of actually wanting to do and singing about it. And it's that contrast of making music about something terrible that was fascinating and fun. And you also wrote about, um, in your blog, I was reading up on it, about at one point going to his mother. Yeah, after we broke up, because um, I broke up with him through text, um, because I, I didn't know how he would react. Um, so I wanted a safe distance. Um, so, after we broke up, I sent his mom a message telling her what had happened, um, telling her to keep an eye on him because I cared about him, um, I wanted him to be safe, and she responded that he told her and he was upset. Um, didn't sound like she was mad at me though. I know you're still probably processing this, um, you wrote about, you know, the moment when you realized that, yeah, he did this, um, are you shocked that he did this, surprised he did this, and how are you feeling um, now? It feels like I'm in an alternate universe, <laughs> like, what a weird sentence, my ex-boyfriend was a mass murderer. What? Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm still in shock. I, I'm going to be dealing with these emotions for probably months, if not longer. <laughs> um, and I, whether or not I was shocked, I'm not shocked he did something horrific because he had untreated problems and there were so many things and there are so many things that people aren't going to know. Um, I am shocked that he did it to this level. I was more concerned about my own safety. Um, I didn't think he would go shoot strangers, especially his sister. I didn't see that one coming. Um, you said that you, like, that you believe, you mentioned yellow flag. Yes. Was, was, there, was there anything, when we talked earlier, you talked about people thinking that you could have gone to that. What were the things that you feel like you could have gone to authorities with? There is nothing I could have gone to the authorities with because he didn't have any concrete plans. You can't, you can't arrest someone for wanting something. That's, that's just not how it works. And the best I could have done, which I didn't do, was rep 
report him to some, to, or talk to his mom. That's probably the best I could have done. And told her that he needed more serious help. He probably needed to be in a hospital. And what makes you say that? What were those things? Well, I mean, some of the, those dark thoughts that I've been talking about, um, wanting to hurt himself, vaguely wanting to hurt other people. He never told me any plans. Um, and that's kind of just something about the illness. It doesn't make us dangerous. Um, and normal people have those kinds of thoughts too, like, ugh, I could just kill my boss. Um, but for Murphy, but for people with mental illnesses, sometimes we ruminate on things and we need professional help to get that out of our heads and deal with that. What did you talk to investigators about? Like the FBI? Mm -hmm. Everything that you guys talked about. <laughs> you guys are doing just as good of a job. Okay. Was there anything specific that they focused on? Um, not really. The weird questions are the like, what kind of music did he listen to? Did he play video games? Like, sure, you can statistically link things. Are they the cause? No. No. Um, that was disheartening that people are looking in that direction. Um, that's, that's what the FBI asked you about? They asked all the other same questions, like, you know, what was your relationship like? Did you know his sister? At this point, same old, same old. But video games also came up. Yeah. Can you talk about um, if he ever spoke about his sister or if he had any sense of what their relationship was like? Um, so he didn't talk about his family a whole lot. Uh, he told me that he liked his sister. Sometimes she was like that annoying little sister, but they're siblings, that happens. Um, they weren't best friends, but he thought that she was a good person. Did you ever visit him at his home and go to his house? I went to his house. Um, I never met his parents. They weren't home. They were working. Um, yeah, it was weird. How so? Because I'm sure you all have seen pictures of him by now. Um, you know, dark clothes, baggy. He looks like, you know, an emo kid. Um, and then you walk into his house and uh, his mom had it decorated in floral, happy colors. And I'm like, this is, who are your parents? Who raised you? And then I walk into his room and it's all black and I'm like, okay, yeah, this makes sense. You believe mental illness was the root of this? No. Or you don't believe that? I believe it was a factor, but I do not believe that it was the factor. This is a much more complicated issue than it is just mental illness or it is just gun control. It is all parts put together, every system failing him, and every system failing those victims through him. This isn't just one simple issue, and for people to blame it on one thing isn't fair to any of the other things. And to always pin murderers on mental illness, like, there are millions of people with mental illnesses who don't go around shooting people. Myself included. Like, we're not dangerous, scary people, but it is it is a factor. Do you, um, I guess, what do you believe should be done in, uh, in, in the wake of something like this? That? I think, in regards to mental illness, the one big thing is really starting a conversation, sitting down with your friends, your families, your children, like, hey, do you ever have these kinds of thoughts? And just really compassionate. And if you have those thoughts, expressing them and being able to be open about them however you can, whether it's through text or a Facebook post or in person, go to therapy. Therapy is the best. It is the best. Um, medication is useful it's not a cure there is no cure it's not an easy fix and i think there needs to be more gun control people with mental illnesses shouldn't own guns the idea that i could go get a gun right now terrifies me i should never be allowed to own a gun and i'm a harmless citizen um the fact that he had a criminal record he shouldn't have even as even as a minor 
he shouldn't be able to purchase a gun. Did he talk about those minor? No, I, that I found out with everyone else. Um, well, for one, I just, I just want to help, um, I want to help put together the pieces, um, and originally I was just going to do the one interview, um, with Caitlin Durbin, um, then I just, I saw everyone calling him a monster. He's not a monster, he did a monstrous act, um, and... If we just look at that, if we just label him as a monster, we're not going to solve anything. We're not going to figure anything out. And I have a unique perspective on him. You don't really hear about mass shooters having ex-girlfriends, especially ones so recent. And the ones that actually cared about him and were like, oh, he's really weird. Like, no, he was a good guy. He wanted to be good. And he just unfortunately couldn't. You mentioned his guns. Did he ever show you them or take you shooting or do anything like that? He never showed me his guns. He took me shooting once. It was the only time I've been shooting. It will be the only time I go shooting. Um, and there was nothing weird about it. It was like he was a, a hobbyist gun owner or gun shooter. Um, he was very safe about it. He made sure I was doing safe practices. Um, he never joked around with the gun. It was always pointed where it needed to be pointed. Um, yeah, there was really nothing weird about that. You said his, um, his dark thoughts, you understood that what, where they were coming from. Mm -hmm. And then um, when he went to his ex-girlfriend's house and brought the letters, and that's when it changed for you. What, what was it about that that you, know, you could deal with the other stuff, but when it came to that, that's where you had to draw the line. Well, because it's one thing to have those thoughts, and it's another to act on them. M most people, including most people with mental illnesses, they're able to manage those thoughts enough to not harm other people. But if I hadn't been there, if I hadn't stopped him from delivering that letter, she would have been terrified of her new house and her new neighborhood and not know who was watching her. And it freaked me out that he was capable of, of that, that he's actually able to go through with that. No, I had no idea. I had no idea he even had Twitter. So. What about any? Yeah, we talked politics some. He was. He called himself leftist because it was easy, but he was some specific thing um, that I don't remember the name of. He used a bunch of big words that <laughs> I don't know the definitions of. That was Antifa one of them? I don't. he ever talked about that. Um, he definitely was more left in his social policies. Um, he was more libertarian with his economic policies. Um, yeah, he, he fought for equality. He got angry at injustices, like racial injustices, sexism. Definitely wasn't about race. This wasn't about religion. This wasn't him trying to hurt a specific group or make any sort of statement. He was not a big statement person. If he was doing this, it was probably in the moment and it was personal. So, what do you mean, him? Did he carry guns with him? No. No. He never had any weapons on him. Might have been in the car, but I don't know. One big wrinkle, obviously, is that unlike some other mass shootings that we were, you know, we've seen, 
this one involves his sister and, and someone that they were both close to. I mean, is it, I'm sure people are wondering why they were involved. I don't know. I have my own theories and I'd share them, but I don't want to wreck lives. Um, I don't know. You guys will know just as much as I do. Um, the cops would have a better idea than I do. When you texted his mom, was there any communication between you two? Or? It was just, I told her, she told me that he was home, he was safe. I said thank you. That was it. I deleted the conversation after that. What was his relationship like with his parents? Was, was, were they on okay state terms? Or? Um, when, uh, he didn't really like them, um, and I figured, for the most part, that was just a growing man, just trying to distance himself from his parents. When he was younger, there were some issues, um, there were some unchecked health issues in the household that affected him, but they got checked, and they got better. about reaching out, but I, I also think about how I didn't do them right, or I don't, I don't want to hurt them by talking to them, which sucks, and that's probably my own mental illness is getting in my head. Um, I just, I feel so bad. I just try not to think about it, because if I do, I'll probably fall apart.